Ugumanaim Shevet Achim Gam Yachar, how good it is for us to come here together, no matter how difficult and heartbreaking a week as it's been, it is always good for us to come together, to pray together, to support each other, to love each other. And so we're going to invite you to get up and greet each other as we welcome Shabbat with this nigun. a seat. Please take a seat as we breathe deeply and settle down to our Shabbat worship. We have two B'nai Mitzvah this week to uplift us with their beauty and their prayers. And so I'm going to invite up Yes, already. <laughs> Sarah and Owen with their families to please join us at the candles. Page two and three. to turn in our prayer books to the next page for the chanting of the Kiddush. Okay, you're fine. Together. Mm -hmm. 
and there was, it was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Heaven and the earth were finished, and all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that God had been doing, and God ceased on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because on it God ceased from all the work of creation that God had done. And as they are drinking from that sweetness, I'm going to share just a little iyun, a little message at the beginning of our services. Many of you know that Fred Rogers was from the Squirrel Hill neighborhood, which was so devastated this week. And in 1968, as anger and division over our most fundamental cultural values and rights spilled out into violence across our country, Fred Rogers sang this question to the children who appeared on his show. What do you do with the mad that you feel when you feel so mad you could bite, when the whole world seems oh so wrong and nothing you do seems very right? And that is the question that all of us are struggling with this week. What do you do? Elie Wiesel reminds us that anger at times can be creative. One writes a great poem, a great symphony. One does something special for the sake of humanity because one is angry at the injustices one witnesses. And so tonight, we try to figure out how to channel our anger, what to do with that mad that's inside of each of us. And one of the things that we are all going to do is vote. And this Shabbat was designated as Let My People Vote Shabbat before it was Solidarity Shabbat. And so we're focusing our attention on that positive thing that those of us who are 18 and older can do and also the kindness and love that we put into our world. Tonight, we welcome Shabbat. We taste a sense of sweetness and peace despite everything. And we welcome Shabbat with the word Shalom Aleichem, page 24. Shalom Aleichem, Malachem.
back in our sidors to page 20 for the singing of Lacha Dodi. Together we welcome the Sabbath bride. Lacha Dodi Lihigrat Kala Penesha to page 28 and remain standing for our call to worship the Baruch Hu.
we pray together at the bottom of page 29. O oh God, you are as near as the very air we breathe, yet farther than the farthermost star. We yearn to reach you. We seek the light and warmth of your presence. Though we say you are near, we are lonely and alone. O oh, let our desire be so strong that it will tear the veil that keeps you from our sight. Let your light release our darkness and reveal the glory and joy of your presence. And we turn now to pages 34 and 35 as Owen and Sarah come back to the Bema. And as we prepare to chant these words of Shema, we think about what it means to be echad, to be one. In this prayer, we claim Adonai echad. God is one. We are all created in that image of God. We are all connected and we are all one. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Elod Malchuto Leolam Vaed Please be seated. Beautiful. Mazel tov to both of you. We are, you're off to a rocking start tonight, and Cantor Siegel and I are so excited to be sharing this day with both of you and your families who we've known your whole lives, and you can be seated now. <laughs> so as I mentioned, this Shabbat we is designated as Let My People Vote Shabbat, and I just wanted to share a little anecdote this past Sunday, my husband and our youngest child, Noah, and I went to vote. And it was Noah's first time voting. And somehow or another, as his ballot was being fed into the machine, the woman who was assisting him knew that he was a first-time voter. And she took handfuls of the stickers, the I Voted stickers, <laughs> and she threw them up in the air. And she said, first time voter. And everybody applauded for him. And Noah said, that was unexpected. <laughs> so it is a joyful freedom that we have, a privilege that we have to live in this democracy, to be able to exercise our right to vote and to celebrate it each and every time we get to do so. Tonight, we're going to sing the words of Micha Mocha on page 40. 
where we think about the freedom of our ancestors in crossing through the Sea of Reeds, and I hope you remember that image when you vote. The next words of our service are the Hashki Venu on page 42. And I know the cantor is going to lead us in a song that begins with the words, Let there be love and understanding among us. And I wanted to share with you this email I received this week from Desmond Mead. Some of you had the privilege of hearing from Desmond here um, last year. He has been the architect of Amendment 4 of the campaign to restore voting rights to former felons. And um, this is what he said to me. I just wanted to send a quick note to you all collectively about the recent tragedy in Pittsburgh. At first, I started to feel bad because I thought I may not have been grieving enough. Unlike a lot of folks, I didn't post anything on social media, but I wanted you to know a couple of things. One, my heart grieves for the victims and their families. I am so tired of the hate and divisiveness in my country. Two, this strengthens my resolve with our campaign because it is about forgiveness love, and inclusion. My heart yearns for a world that embraces love and inclusion. I will keep the Jewish community in my prayers as well as all of humanity. Thank you for your time and understanding of my humble attempt to express sympathy and solidarity. And so we all feel that sense of solidarity as we sing these words of love and understanding. Find the English on the top of page 43. His powerful words, the words of the evening, asking for God's protection. Let there be love and understanding. Let 
to page 46 to the central prayers of our worship service, Hatfilah. We are asked to pray as if everything depends on God, but to act as if everything depends on us. I invite you to please rise. Adonai sefatai tiftach uhufia gite hilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu velohe avoteinu v'imoteinu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanara, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovi, Vekone Hakol. Vizocher has de avot fehima hot, who may be gula, leave neve nehem, lemma an shemo be ahava, Melechoser, umoshia, uma gain, Baruchata Adonai, Magin Avraham, Vezrat Sarah, Atagi Borle Olam Adonai, Mikhaye ha kola tarav lo hoshia, Mashiv ha ruach umorid ha gahashem, Mikhal kel chayim be chesed, Mikhaye ha kol be rachamim rabim, So homech no flim vero feholim, Uma tirasurim, Ume kahaye mehemunato, Lishe ne. Ahafar, Miha Mocha, Baal Givu wrote, Umi Domelach, Melech me me, Umehaye, Umats me ah Yeshua, Venemana Talahayo Tahakol, Baruchata Adonai, Mehaye Hakol. We continue our prayers silently, either the prayers of our heart or the prayers in the book through page 60, and you may be seated when you're done.
have this very poignant piece of music in your program, in your service order, entitled One People by Debbie Friedman of Blessed Memory. I hope you'll join me when you learn the chorus. We'll start with the chorus, so I'll sing it a few times. We'll be one people seeking freedom, one people seeking justice, one people seeking hope, one people seeking peace. Let's try that together. We'll be one people seeking freedom, one people seeking justice, one people seeking hope, one people seeking peace. God bless our country. Let every race and creed unite in harmony and pride. We'll join together and we'll work hand in hand. We are one people standing side by side. We'll be one people seeking freedom, one One people seeking hope, one people seeking peace again. One people seeking freedom, one people seeking justice, one people seeking hope, one people seeking peace. God bless our country and all its people. May they be free of hate and war. Lay down your swords and shields. Nations will not fight again. And they will not learn war anymore. We'll be one people seeking freedom. One people seeking justice. One Our thoughts turn to those who are in need of a prayer of healing on this Shabbat. And first, we will pray on behalf of those who were injured in the Tree of Life shooting in Pittsburgh. We turn our thoughts to John Person, Michael Smigda, Tyler Pichel, Dan Mead, Tim Matson, Anthony Burke, Andrea Wedner, and Daniel Langer. We also pray for healing for all of the families of the fallen. And as a congregation, we pray on behalf of Gail Ossip, George Lublin, Moshe Ben Cyril Bela Uruvain, Lenny Hecht, Bill Meadow, David Siegel, Judith Ryder Cornelison, Elisa Ben Ray, Muriel Dubrow, Marta Leva, Marilyn Sheffman, Randy and Shirley Aronson, Sylvia Levitsky, Roberta Ty, Vicki Engelman, Sherry Werbin, Richie Harris, Gabrielle Desonye, Hanasara Batavid, Kavalea Badhadasa, Bill Jean Smith, Linda Lee, Rachel Batmiriam Umordachai, Ravi Patel, Harriet Pearson, Adam Danton, Joe Meltzer, Mark Revo, Annette Pasternak, Michael Wolk, Robert Fagan, and Jennifer Sargent. And if you are praying on behalf of somebody else who needs a prayer of healing, whether it's physical or spiritual, or you yourself are in need of a prayer, I'll invite you. I'm going to walk through the congregation, and if you want to rise and share the name with us, please do.
Penny. We think of all of them, and as well, we have a prayer of healing for the Tree of Life Synagogue. It's in your handout on the very back page. It says, Prayer for the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. And so we recite those words together. Tree of Life, revive our souls, enrich our days, entreating your blessings. O God of peace, Fill our hearts with comfort, a letting your Torah shine in the fullness of our love. Faith in you, our God, eternal source of blessings. Pray for healing in the depths of despair, thanking God for the survivors, thanking God for the first responders. Sorrow crushing our hearts, bereaved beyond belief, united in our love, returning to you in faith, God of Israel, healer of generations, tree of life, redeemer of Israel, enliven this moment with healing, enliven this moment with hope. O rock of Israel, forget not the Jews of Pittsburgh. Let your love flow in the days ahead for justice and peace everlasting. And we continue our prayers together, prayers for healing and hope. Misha Bayrock on page 253. me share Hearted, we also have much to celebrate as individuals and as a congregation. And so we reserve this moment of our worship together for rejoicing. And so I'm going to call out a few different things, and if they apply to you, I ask you to please rise, and then we'll all join together in the Shehekianu, a prayer of gratitude. So Anybody who's having a bar or bat mitzvah this weekend and their families, please rise. Mazel tov. Anybody who has a birthday this week, Craig Burko, or an anniversary, or you had a wedding, engagement, or a new baby to celebrate in your lives. Anybody who has already voted Please rise. Anybody who still plans to vote, please rise. Anybody who is grateful to be alive and worshiping together in freedom, please rise. And now I'll invite you to put your arm around your neighbor and to thank God for this moment of life. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekimanu Vehegianu Lazman Hazeh Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehechianu Vekimanu Vehegianu Let's go. 
don't be seated. Don't be seated. I'm going to invite the Shulmans and the Basners to please go up to the ark and open the doors. And as they do so, I'll invite any children in our congregation to please join them up there on the bima. And we're all going to turn to page 282 for the chanting of Alenu. Alenu the Shabbat la Don Hakol la Dekidu la Liotzer Breshit Shelo Asanu Kikoyeha Ratzo Velo Samanu Kimishpachot Adama Shelo Before we turn to Kaddish, which is on page 294, I want to just share with you these words of Rabbi David Wolpe from California. He writes, this was a week of losses. The horrible shooting in Pittsburgh preoccupies all of us and the question of how to respond. Yet another loss we suffered this week points the way. In our community, we lost Max Webb at the age of 101. Max survived multiple labor and concentration camps. He was a builder, a philanthropist, a one-time dance instructor, and a remarkably wise and sparkling human being. And I will never forget what he told me almost 20 years ago. Having moved into a condo, Max one day approached me and asked me how the condo was. You know, I told him, I've lived there for almost two years, and there's still so much to do. Max put his hand on my shoulder and looked into my eyes and said, listen, Jews are never done. So too, our friends and our enemies all over the world, we say this, we will mourn our dead, and defend our rights, because Jews, as Max taught us, Jews are never done. And so we think of those words of wisdom and of our call to action as we think of our dead, those who have died in the last 30 days and whose families remain in the shloshim of their mourning. We think of Isidore Newman, Joseph Cerulio, David Moskowitz, Estelle Haber, Herbert Leon Gottman. We think of the Tree of Life victims who died almost one week ago. Joyce Feinberg, Richard Gottfried, Rose Mallinger, Melvin Max, Jerry Rabinowitz, Cecil Rosenthal, David Rosenthal, Bernice Simon, Sylvan Simon, Daniel Stein, and Irving Younger. May their memories be a blessing. We also remember all those whose yard sites are observed on this Shabbat and whose names are lovingly inscribed in our alcove of remembrance. We think of Mendel Barg, Mitchell Basker, Saul Belenke, Rose Blum, Bali Bagdish, Esther Borowski, Jack Boykoff, Shepard Broad, Julius Cooper, Julia Cooperman, Harry Diner, Samuel Drexler, Irving Frumkis, Morris Granoff, 
Herman Hartog, David Hecht, Gertrude Joseph, Barbara Cam, Louis Kessler, Elizabeth Pokris Kleinberg, Esther Cushman, Charles Lieberman, Tilly Major, Lois Midas, Paul Notowitz, Bart Notowitz, Hilda Novigrat, Mary Paria Pardo, Rose Pascal, Nellie Perrell, Aaron Pollock, Esther Bogan Provis, Frank Reiner, Minnie Rolls, Annie Siebel, Albert Silverstein, Ethel Spiro, Jules Stark, Sally Weinberg, and Chaim Weitzman. And as well, we remember all those other yurt sites observed on this Shabbat, Ben Zion Ben David, Sara Berezdevin, Etta Lea Block, Marion Bloom, Zelda Channing, Louis Cohen, Albert Alexander Devore, Gail Kramer Diamond, Harry Esrig, Gertrude Faber, Murray Finer, Muriel Fine, Florence Fruckman, Benjamin Grad, Norman Hirsch, Mary Dorothy Kilpatrick, Leonard Lifland, Abraham Lifland, Harvey Lozman, Marion Midas, Doris Orenstein, Anita Rosenblatt, Albert Sackner, Joseph Abraham Schoen, Elise Hope Schwartz, Sidney Shipman, Edmund Wachter, and Samuel Wisner. Once again, we turn to page 294, and we rise to affirm our faith, to affirm our belief in a better world, to praise God and to thank God for these lives. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shemei rabba, ve'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute, v'chayachon v'yomechon uv'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael, v'agala uv'yizman kari v'yimru amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mivarach Lealam Lalame Almaya. Yit Barach Vyishtabak Vit Paar Vit Raman Vit Nase. Vit Hadar Vit Alev Vit Talal Shme de Kudusha Brihu. Leela Min Kol Birchata Vishirata. Tush Bechata Venechamata. Damiran Bealma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shalama Rabba Min Shemaya. Bechaim Alenu Vial Ko Yisrael. Bimru, Amen. O se shalom bimramav, hu ya se shalom, aleinu ve'al ko Yisrael, bimru, Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, and all people everywhere, and let us say, Amen. You may be seated. And it's my pleasure to invite up Bart Chepanik, a member of our board, to share some greetings and announcements of upcoming events. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Uh, I want to first please welcome Denise Bar Aron, who's the CEO of Make a Wish Foundation Israel. And also Israeli actor Devir Benedek, who will be speaking after sir, both of them will be speaking after services in the Welcome Center and in, in sharing their personal stories. Uh, so please join us in the Welcome Center afterwards uh, for the conversation. Uh, there will also, of course, be a beautiful Israeli oneg as well, sponsored by the Shulmans and the Basners, Mazel Tov, to Sarah and to and to Owen. Um, it's a it's a it's a beautiful weekend. I'll start off the announcements with the obvious. And I'll also say that um, I saw most people had voted here, but for those who haven't, um, I was feeling pretty sick to my stomach last weekend. I hadn't yet voted. I woke up on Monday and I went and I voted and I felt a whole lot better. <laughs> so, um, so November 6th, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., we have midterm elections at a voting, dedicated voting polling station near you. If you haven't, please go ahead and vote. You'll feel a whole, whole lot better. That's Tuesday, November the 6th. 
let our people vote. As always, as, as always um, tomorrow, Shabbos, there is meditation at 825 in the morning with Marta Singerman and Natalie Davis, followed by Torah study at 930 a.m. That's every single Saturday, served, followed by um, Shabbat Minyan at 1030 here in the chapel. Uh, we do have an ongoing feeding, feeding frenzy from October, uh, started October 29th to, no, to, to next Friday, November the 9th. Um, please bring your perishable, non-perishable goods. Um, of course, we have the installation for Rabbi Pomerantz. One more time, we're going to carry the flag and welcome our new senior rabbi. Um, the, the online registration is now closed, but everyone is welcome to attend. And we ask that you contact Noemi here at TBS. Um, and the festivities start at 515, and they, uh, and they continue on through the wee hours of the morning. Uh, Tuesday, November the 13th at 7 p.m., very special screening of, uh, of a film called Bagels Over Berlin. It's the story of, uh, of um, Jewish veterans of the U.S. Air Corps, and uh, we're going to be in, it's told by um, the, the men who volunteered to do that work, and the film's director, Alan Feinberg, will be here to introduce the program. It's going to be very special, and, uh, and I look forward to seeing everybody here for that. Uh, November, the next day, Wednesday, November the 14th, uh, there, the next sacred conversation with Rabbi Pomerantz will be the Hanukkah, the tension between enough and, and too much. So come get a little bit more of your too much. Uh, uh, then later on in that day, on November the 14th at 6.30, Sisters in the Hood presents um, Make Your Own Mezuzah. It is sisterhood, um, sisterhood only. But uh, if you're interested in sisterhood membership, please, 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 um, don't uh, please join the sisterhood at 6:30 on November the 14th to make mezuzahs with Grace Sherman, um, a special talent here at Temple Beth Shalom. And also, uh, for anyone that's interested in um, in poll watching, this is a, a very important protection of our of our constitutional right here. Uh, I encourage there will be a, there will be a training here on Sunday at, from two o'clock to four o'clock led by an organization named Common Cause. Again, there are, many, there are many jobs attendant to watching polls. And if you've ever done it, it's very satisfying work. Uh, again, protect, protecting a very precious right that we have here. Uh, that is Sunday, again, from two o'clock to four here at the synagogue. Uh, one and Mazal Tov to the Shulmans and the Basners. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Thank you all for being here tonight for Solidarity Shabbat and Let My People Vote Shabbat and Mazel Tov uh, to the B'nai Mitzvah and their families. The Talmud teaches us why we emphasize yard sites, anniversaries of death, so much more than we emphasize birthdays, as beautiful as birthdays are. The yard site date encompasses the fullness of the life a person lived, and that in Jewish tradition is more important than even the potential of a life to be. Last Shabbat, 11 Jews were killed, their lives cut short, killed in an anti-Semitic, xenophobic hate crime, an act of domestic terrorism through a mass shooting at the hands of a white supremacist with a semi-automatic weapon, Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. This was, as we know, the most deadly anti-Semitic hate crime in US history and one of the most violent mass shootings at a house of worship in this country. It's shaken each of us to the core, demanding us to stop and consider this moment in American life. And first and foremost, it's a time of mourning. It's a time to honor the lives of those Tree of Life regulars who were killed, whose lives were cut short of their fullness. We may be asking ourselves, how best do we do that? This week's Torah portion, Chaye Sarah, means the life of Sarah. And appropriately, given the Talmud teaching I just shared, it opens with the death of Sarah, our matriarch. Unlike the description of Avraham's death at the end of the Parsha, that he had ba yamim, come into his years, and was blessed with everything, the rabbis teach that Sarah died directly after learning of her husband's near sacrifice of Isaac, the story of the Akedah that ended last week's Parsha. 
Her body, it seems, literally could not contain the trauma of the news that her husband nearly sacrificed her son. Our Torah portion following Sarah's death is about Abraham's mourning and then securing his legacy. At the end of the Parsha, Isaac and Ishmael come together to mourn the death of their father, although they have not spoken in decades. This week, people from all faiths and backgrounds have joined with the Jewish community in vigils and solidarity throughout the country. In our grief, we've been reminded that love is stronger than hate, hope stronger than fear, and faith stronger than doubt. Tonight, we have moved from trauma into mourning, and now we must also turn towards legacy, securing a future for our children that's more just and unified, more loving and less xenophobic, anti-Semitic, racist, and generally fear-mongering and hateful than the society that we live in. Next week is a very important midterm election, as we've said now many times in the service. Um, some of you have already voted early, some at home. We encourage everyone here to vote as part of our 100% civic engagement campaign. At Temple Beth Shalom, the Social Justice Network has focused its work for the past year and a half on criminal justice reform and racial justice to pass Amendment 4, or to help pass Amendment 4 for voter restoration. We say yes to Amendment 4 because all people deserve a second chance. More people being eligible to vote is healthy for democracy, and Jews know what it means when the government decides who does and doesn't count. So tonight we have the honor of hearing from someone who's personally affected by voting ineligibility because of Florida's outdated law regarding felony convictions that hasn't been updated since the Civil War. Angel Sanchez is here to encourage us in our quest for peace and justice in this election season. Angel is a second year law student at the University of Miami School of Law and a leading advocate on Amendment 4. As a member of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, he helped lead efforts to get Amendment 4 on the ballot. Angel's connection to this issue is personal. He has an inspiring story of redemption which he's agreed to share with us tonight. He's appeared at Harvard University many times and on multiple news stations about the amendment. And just this week, Grammy Award winner John Legend tweeted about Angel and highlighted his story. So uh, here to share his story with us in support of voter restoration and the Second Chances campaign is Angel Sanchez. May he and all of us, like Abraham before us, have full and blessed lives in which we fully count. Shabbat Shalom. Well, it's truly an honor to be here today, and um, I, we planned this talk about a little over a month ago, and at that time, the idea was that I was coming here to talk about the amendment and ask for support. Um, but after this past weekend's tragedy and attending a vigil at the university, there's no other place I would have rather been than at a temple um, for Shabbat. It is my first time attending, and I am proud to be here in solidar solidarity with you all. Um, that being said, um, I, I really don't want to make it about myself or even the amendment. I just want to just share a little bit about my journey, hopefully, and giving some hope um, to talk about the resilience of humanity. Um, and it's something that I think the Jewish community is, is very well um, known for, which is its resilience throughout history. And I think I have been able to be inspired by many. Uh, so I will share a little bit about my story. Um, as you heard, I was personally impacted, or I am personally impacted by this issue. I grew up in the inner cities here in Miami, in the Alapata Little Havana area, um, when crime was rampant in those areas, surrounded by drugs, crimes, and violence. Um, by the time I was 12 and 13, I began to get arrested as a juvenile. Uh, my mom has battled a lifelong addiction with drugs, and my dad did his best to raise me on his own. Um, but unfortunately, as many teenagers um, prove, their peers are more important than parents by the time they become teenagers. And unfortunately, my peers um, were those that were around me in troubled neighborhoods. After many different arrests, I would get involved in gang-related shootings and end up in prison with a 30-year sentence at the age of 16. Um, it is in prison where the life that I understood, the life that I came from, and the life that would allow me to survive in prison continued. Um, but it also was in prison at the age of 19, sitting in a prison law library, where I discovered my passion for the law. And at that moment, I began to grow up. I was maturing. 
Um, I was only 19 years old at the time. And it, it, it was in that moment that I, that it sunk in that I was a teenager who had lost his whole future, who had nothing to show for all my dad's sacrifice. And it was at that moment that I wished that if I ever got a second chance, I would pursue this dream of someday going to college and, and going to law school somehow. Um, fortunately, my sentences were declared illegal. I was resentenced to 15 years, and I ultimately served 12 years in prison. And after serving 12 years and never having been an adult in society, I decided that I could not come back to Miami and instead moved into a homeless shelter in Orlando. And from there, worked hard and encountered numerous barriers. But along that path and with each barrier, there was also a person that helped me clear that hurdle. Um, for example, um, after graduating at the top of my class at, the at, at Valencia Community College, receiving two degrees with a 4.0 and a national scholarship from the Cook Foundation, um, I was denied acceptance to the local university because I had too much probation. In essence, I had done too much too quickly. I needed to have half of my probation completed. That could have ended my academic journey. Um, thankfully, though, I came back to Miami, stood before a judge here, and with a state attorney agreeing to the reduction, the judge came back and said, I'm not reducing your probation. I'm terminating it outright, and I heard you want to go to law school. You could be my judicial intern this summer. I share that because it, 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 it highlights the importance of other people reaching out and helping those who are trying to help themselves but cannot. And this election, we have that opportunity. But more than anything, um, I, like I said, I wanted to just give a glimpse of hope um, to the resilient character of an individual, which is also very much represented in your community. Um, Jews are not done. And I am so thankful to believe that to know that, and we're not done. People who of goodwill are not done. And so um, before closing, I just wanna encourage you, um, when you go to the ballot, and if you haven't gone to the ballot, if you already have gone to the ballot, um, to consider this story, but more importantly, consider what is right. Um, some of the, the songs we read today, um, one of them, moved him and said, you know, I thought, what would happen if the amendment doesn't pass? Well, what happened, Angel, when they told you no at the university? I will keep fighting, I will keep trying, and I'll keep doing the right thing, because I trust that someone along the way will help me. And so um, the same thing I would encourage this community, in, in light of what happened this last weekend, I will quote what I read today, which is, what would you do? And it says here, lift yourself up, shake off the dust, array yourself in beauty, oh my people. And what is beautiful? To fight for others, to love, to show hope, to fight for peace. And so I encourage you, I will continue advocating for, the, for what's right. And this election and next election and in your day-to-day -day life, please fight for what is right. Thank you. Angel, tonight you were our angel. Thank you for inspiring us, for uplifting us, for sharing with us your beautiful, beautiful story. And that story will stay with each one of us. So I'm going to invite you to rise one more time. And we are going to conclude our service with a longtime favorite song, a song of healing and hope. This land is your land. It's in your program if you need the words. And yours, and yours, and yours, and yours. This land is your land. This land.
Shalom. Ah. Uh, I was 